Hello my boils, my ghouls, and my zools. Welcome back to Kalashkamaz. I am here bundled up looking like a homeless vet. It is really cold. I am having some coffee in my wildly Soviet looking Christmas cup here. <laughs> Wrap this up about the Tantal. So I did end up bringing it to Thunder on the Tundra and uh, it performed pretty well. Uh, it was its first outing at a competition, so had a couple of growing pains trying to figure out what kind of ammo this thing likes. It does not like 69 grain, and uh, honestly, the higher grains doesn't really run that well on it. I, so I did get a couple issues that were probably just mag-related, uh, maybe ammo-related, a couple failure to feeds here and there, and I did get a couple light primer strikes. Um, so I arrived at Thunder on the Tundra the night before. It got really cold real fast. Um, I camped there, so I set up my camp and uh, walked around the grounds. If you've never done Thunder on the Tundra, I gotta tell you, this place is awesome. The property's fantastic. I mean, just a big old farm, and I mean, the stages are huge. That's the Hub City stage right there. It's awesome, man. It's uh, set up more towards uh like new shooters i guess so i mean essentially that means uh lots of run and gun i don't think there's any steel there's one 200 yard range i believe but other than that man it looks like it's it's just a hose fest one thing i can say about the place is it's a really beautiful property and the uh bays are really wide that's kind of cool the bays are very very wide they're not very long though so can't really get too much distance out of it but you know, they are sufficiently wide. One thing I got to say, though, is uh, they are just concrete blocks. And, I mean, there's holes you can see through in those things. So, I don't know how safe that really is, especially with the amount of ricochets that were going over our heads all day. My God. Got up bright and early the next morning, and it had dropped to snow temperatures by the morning. So, uh, it was pretty cold. Luckily, I had plenty of cold weather gear with me, and I wore a Ukrainian Ground Forces cold weather uniform. So... It was very helpful. They're fleece lined. The stages were a short walk through a field from the camp. So I walked over in the morning after I got ready and attended the shooters meeting. And then we went off to our first stage. Uh, we had to wait about 45 minutes or so to start shooting. Um, it was quite a while. They had to work out stuff with like timers and, and scoring and all this. It, yeah, it wasn't together in the morning. So um, yeah, we sat there and uh, froze. <laughs> By the time we started shooting, the sun started to come out, and it was getting a pretty slick on the grass. Uh, most of the stages were covered in grass. So, yeah, it was a little bit of a complication with the shoes. Uh, wish I would have brought boots. It would have been nice. Unfortunately, I didn't catch a ton on film because, uh, well, we were waiting around for so long. Every time I got called, I was like, oh, crap, you know, time to go. You know, uh, they weren't too good about calling out shooting orders and stuff like that, so... Anyhow, so luckily my eternal squad mate, Tommy, he was there to help me out and, you know, he at least got some of my stages for me. So, so I started the stage and you start with a single shot shotgun and you have to grab your ammo, run over to the shotgun, load it, uh, engage a clay, reload it, engage another clay, you drop the shotgun and then you have to pick up three, like, uh, Homer's buckets full of water and run them back across the stage and that's when you can grab your rifle and start engaging targets and um yeah by the time i did that man i was already pretty cold and it was real slick on that grass so i just took it nice and easy <laughs> Nothing to write home about, no blazing speed or nothing like that. So to be completely, utterly honest, I didn't dig the stage too much. I didn't really like starting with the stage gun and then the stage prop, and then most of the stage you're actually fucking with props, so not my cup of tea. Anyway, we moved on. So after that stage, we went over to the long range stage, which was a 200 yard stage, and we had to wait about 
an hour or so for the squad to finish shooting and then uh, I think I was about an hour after that or so so quite a wait uh, the sun really came out and started to heat the day up so you know I took the jacket off and by the time I stepped up you know it was real hot <laughs> compared to the morning it was real hot so this stage was actually pretty cool for a stage gun stage uh, the point was to hit the couch but you know only one person I think did it all weekend maybe two or something like that you know it was kind of a luck thing I'm I'm not really sure how you know the fact that that would counted for 30 seconds off your score when it's complete luck um, oh yeah by the way the sights for the grenade launcher were not working so there was no way to really gauge exactly how you were going to you know do <laughs> um, anyhow got through it it was a fun stage but did have one little problem which was not rifle related so I was running the Atero arms and unfortunately I don't know if I didn't put enough Loctite on it or if the Loctite didn't set or something like that but optics mount came loose Are we ready? Stand by made it through even if I was you know down by like an MOA or something from the mount coming loose or whatever you know if I was knocked loose or whatever uh, you know it was okay I made it through the stage we moved on there was no more long range for the weekend so it wasn't really a big deal uh, everything else was pretty close up and there wasn't too much precision shooting so you know I just rolled with it for the rest of the stages for that day so I did get a light primer strike on one stage didn't really set me back. I mean, I did have to drop the mag because I couldn't figure it out at first, but, you know. <laughs> you got it, whatever that's figuring out problems on the clock you know I'm only uh, in my first year of shooting competition so you know actually I just passed my first year so maybe we'll have to do like a retrospective video at the end of the year or something like that cuz you know I've actually done a couple of these big competitions twice now so you know it's kinda cool to see from you know first year to second year so maybe we'll do something like that so anyhow back to the rifle I didn't have any other malfunctions other than just the uh, light primer strike and the optics mount coming loose um, I did have a couple mag related issues where I just couldn't get the mag in because you know these Polish guys are pretty tight so so one thing I could say about this rifle though if you're looking to pick one up that extra length on the muzzle brake does make it quite a bit of rifle to spear in and out so if you absolutely have to go through a port or something like that uh, beware it's a lengthy guy Long, long so if you're used to shooting something short like a Draco or you know I shoot my M85 quite a bit or maybe you rock a crank quite a bit beware it's a lot of rifle 
Um, I was coming around the corner on a stage and I did catch it on the, uh, some netting wasn't completely trimmed on the end and I caught the rifle and luckily it didn't go through the netting and I didn't end up looking like, you know, oh god, get this thing out of the netting. Uh, it just flapped in and banged on my waist. So, so the second day, oh, gotta switch batteries. If these demands are not met, Crimson Jihad will rain fire on one major American city each week. Pardon me, gotta keep the camera fed. So the second day, I switched over to my backup rifle, which was the PSA AK-74, and that's only because I was sure the zero on that thing was solid, and I wasn't sure if there was any more long range. I didn't want to screw myself by having long range and a zero that I didn't know if it was still on. And uh, also, I didn't even know if this mount was going to come loose again, so I just switched over just to be safe. So I didn't get much footage of the second day uh, because it took a bit to get going in the morning and I ended up having to RO for the second day for about half the day. And, um, well, what was it, two or three stages or something like that. So uh, we got going and uh, did my first stage. I just ran through my stage real quick first just to get it out of the way. So, yeah, here's my stage. That was just real quick. You got to stay with it. Stay with it. Get it back. Oh, yeah. So we got through the stage pretty fast, and luckily the other RO, he was also experienced and knew how to do this. So, you know, he was actually holding the timer behind his back. He actually knew which orientation the muzzle went, because, yeah, the first day, I got into an argument with two different ROs. One of them actually raising his voice to me. It looks like a rather blustery day. Yeah, about which direction the muzzle should go. And, um... Yeah, it was ridiculous, so it was a muzzle up range, but, you know, I heard in the same, like, three stages, muzzle up, muzzle down, muzzle, down. muzzle up, and I, so, yeah, that caused a little bit of conflict, and, uh, yeah, there were some other RO issues the first day, I mean, I'm not just gonna sit here and draw a list and shit on them, because, I mean, yeah, this, there was problems, I mean, uh, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do because, you know, they got to, we got to move the match on. So we got done in a timely manner and then we had to wait another hour for the next squad to start, uh, finish this stage. And then once we started shooting, uh, a target broke and then we had to wait another hour, about an hour or so for them to fix it. And so, you know, we finally started shooting and, you know, just got through the stage and I was still ROing, so I didn't get any film of that guy. I did film my friend Tommy here, so. All right, give me a vroom vroom. Stand by! So since I was kind of busy, I didn't really get any footage of this stage either. And, I mean, honestly, I can't even really remember the rest of the stages that day. It just took so goddamn long. One of them was actually more than two hours we were waiting to shoot it. It was crazy. I mean, dude, it was literally dark when we got done. I'm like, whoa, dude, there's only a hundred shooters at this entire match? What? Dude, that's not that many more than Texas Kalashnikov. Like, what the hell, dude? Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and shit on him, even though, I mean, i got to be honest, that stuff happened. The match was cheap. They fed us. It, it was optionally priced. Um, oh, there were prizes. I mean, staff won a bunch of them, but, uh, there were prizes. Um, and, uh, there, uh, there were prizes. So subsequently, a couple weeks later, I did get a little bit more performance data on this guy at Red October. So my friend Addie was not originally going to shoot Red October, but she got a last minute ticket, showed up in Boulder City, didn't have a rifle, but you know, we made it work because that's how this community is. Uh, pulled this guy out and said, you know, hey, you could either use the PSA AK-74 or this guy. I would say use the P 
PSA simply because it's got a better trigger and a better zero on it. Yeah, so she said, I'll use the Tantal. And um, yeah, it went really well for her. Uh, it had the Kalashnikov or Shark Tooth uh, handguard on there. So, I mean, it's the perfect handguard. I'm just trying this reverse dong out here uh, to see how I like it on this guy, which I actually like it. Um, no problems actually loading mags whatsoever. So anyways, I just found some more gold paint. God damn it. <laughs> like fucking stripper aids, man. It's like you go to the fucking club and then you got goddamn glitter on you for the next two months. Oh, I don't know nothing about that. I have been a happily married man twice. <laughs> Back to it. Red October did have a little bit of long range, you know, a couple hundred yards and some hundred yard shots, and Addie nailed them every single time. Uh, all the close-up stuff, she was nailing. I mean, the trigger on this guy isn't the quickest. Like I said, it's a uh, Tapco. She didn't even take it rather conservatively. She was actually blazing along with this trigger, and it's not the fastest trigger on the planet. It's just an old-school Tapco, like I said. You know, it's a little bit better than a military trigger, but it's still nothing like an ALG. And, you know, she performed with it. She did perform with it. So, I can't say anything bad about the rifle. So, I gotta say, as far as AK-74s go, this guy to me is a 10 out of 10. It can't take 69 grain. That's totally fine. A lot of guns can't take 69 grain. But when it comes to the bang for the buck factor on this guy, especially being a Polish, my god, it's a great rifle. It's a really great rifle. I mean, it's a little bit long. That's not really too much of a problem, you know, you get used to things, whatever. I got longer rifles, I got a L1A1 that's pretty damn long. The wire folder, fantastic stock, man. It is massively underrated. I don't know why there's a lot of people that don't like them. I mean, it's not the best for this particular optic setup, but if I was running irons, man, the cheek weld is in the perfect position on this guy. Yeah, you got that wire going into your face, but it's really not that big of a deal. And I have to say, as far as the rear end of a buttstock, the wire folder is my favorite. That grid on there, oh, it's fantastic, man. Because I like something with a little bit of purchase on there. I like something with a little bit of grip. That's just me. I've complained about slippery stocks in the past, so... Yeah, that's why I like these. I really like triangle stocks. I really like using the uh, GP25s, the uh, pussy pads. And, uh, man, I can't say really anything bad. It's just a fantastic freaking rifle. <clears throat> so, really, the only thing I'm going to do to this guy is put the irons back on because I just registered for the Kalashnikov Winter Tactical Games. And I figure this will be a great rifle for that because I'll get to use the bipod. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to run a 69 grain through this, so... If there's any real, real, real long range, might be a little problematic with 545, but it's only one stage and we do this for fun. So, you know, just trying to improve. And, you know, that's one thing. I'm gonna practice some long range with irons. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Using that Russian EOTech. Really, as far as rifles go, I don't really think you can beat an AK for iron sights outside of maybe an HK. HKs have fantastic iron sights as well, but. You know, you got a really good set of irons on an AK. So I figure it's really time to get acquainted with them and, uh, you know, know my rifles a little better. Especially because as long as a hollow sun will last you, batteries do not last forever. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this little conclusion of the Tantal. And we're going to have some more Polish content coming up. Got even more Polish content coming up. We can get some time to film it because, my God, it has been a busy time, which uh, I'll talk about in the Red October video. It's relating to me get shot. Tell the story then. Things should be cleared up by then. So stay tuned. Have fun. Do stupid. <laughs>